Hello, my name is Cal Molone from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. Matt Badalioli from Richmond, Virginia, I'm an anarchist. And today we bring to you the news from underground, this time covering a story happening down under in Venezuela, a place where the results of uh, socialist policies have resulted in long, long, uh, stressful lines for bread, for uh, diapers, and toilet fucking paper. Uh, in fact, somebody calls it an, an odyssey. There's somebody who's uh, quoting, it's like embarking on an odyssey. Yeah, an odyssey of socialist policy bullshit. And this is what happens when you have uh, this kind of control over society and, and of their livelihood. Uh, they've even sent soldiers in to uh, make sure, at gunpoint of course, with their assault rifles, making sure that the uh, property owners, the, the business owners, are uh, having their fair distribution of their products. This is their property. It's like someone coming into your house or you're having um, a, a lawn sale, for example, and saying, uh, you know, they're, they're making sure that you sell it at a particular price. You know, it's no difference. That's something that a lot of people have to kind of understand. There's no difference from somebody having a lawn sale and selling their products in a brick and mortar store or e-commerce store. It's your product. It's your property. You can do what with you, you want to with that. Um, so that's what's going on in Venezuela. Long bread lines, this uh, reminisce of Soviet Russia. Uh, but of course, there's a lot of similar examples here in the United States that uh, you can find as well. And we're going to elucidate some of those examples very in a moment. Uh, but before we go there, let's talk about what is price controls. Price control is just uh, basically when the government says it is illegal for you to sell a certain product uh, at a or above, excuse me, a, a certain price that's already been predetermined by legislators lacking the information present in the marketplace. Yeah, and so that means that uh, governments can assess these uh, prices artificially low. Uh, for the presume and promise that they can uh, provide you cheaper prices, uh, uh, you know, at gunpoint, of course. And so, what ends up happening now in Venezuela? They have all these uh, soldiers kidnapping um, and throwing a lot of business owners in cages for refusing to abide by their price control policies. And uh, this is kind of rampant now in Venezuela. And the result is long waits and lines under, a, you know, a burning sun over, I guess, that uh, turmoil and humidity. Uh, and it goes on for a while. There's a lot of fights breaking out now. Uh, it's very difficult to find these uh, simple products out there. Um, and so a lot of people are buying this at the low, uh, low prices and of course sometimes going overboard into Colombia and selling them for higher prices. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing is happening with the electronics there. So it's very difficult for a lot of the, uh, the market to, to function when you have uh, this kind of dictatorial dictatorship uh, control over, over the market. Over Price controls, um, but of course, you're you know why why are prices uh, important? You people would ask. You got to have prices because if you don't have prices. There's no reflection of supply and demand. There's no reflection of scarcity. There's no reflection of marginal utility. Uh, in in today's society, if you were to free of price controls, let's say, uh, have a product that's made with a particular resource, and that particular resource becomes somewhat scarce. It gets uh, I guess overused uh, or used past a certain extent, uh, and then that causes naturally for the price to go up because the supply goes down. Um, and that increases the marginal utility of each individual resource or individual unit of that particular resource. So um, when you don't let that happen, uh, the price doesn't go up. That doesn't cause people to substitute away from anything that uses that particular resource and therefore allow the supply of that particular resource to replenish itself. So you have, again, scarcity, uh, uh, grave scarcity, such as with the toilet paper, such as with, um, uh, with bread. So if the, um, the government says, well, the price of um, good X is, say, now, uh, 75 cents, but the market says, you know, it's 90 cents, then you're not going to have any of that, that left. It's going to be picked over. It's going to be uh, exploited. Too yeah. Much. Uh, so what are some contemporary examples you'll find here in the United States? Um, now, of course, long lines that people have um, are used to are, are different in the marketplace than when government monopolized services. Like, for example, there's long, white, long wait lines in um, water parks, for example, or to go on a roller coaster mm -hmm. or, or cookout. That's different because you can go right next door to Burger King, you can go next door to Taco Bell, you can go to other areas that there is still competition for. It's also for. different because when you go to a, like a place like the DMV, you have to go to the DMV. Right, yeah. you know, like, people are doing, people are going to water parks for, for the fun of it, not right. because they, they have to get their license renewed or something. You know? Right, yeah. Every, yeah. People waiting in those lines have these you know smiling faces, even though they're waiting in line for, for that enjoyment, for that fun. Um, there's no threat of force behind that, whereas on DMV there is for a lot of people that uh, it threatens their livelihood especially when they need that vehicle transportation mode to go to work. Um, so DMV is an example of socialistic uh, long wait lines. Your uh, local post office are examples of socialistic long wait lines. And of course, the way that, you know, we, we say this often a lot, you know, the way that they resolved in fixing those long wait lines is by removing the clocks off their walls and having a nice little placard saying that, uh, you know, it's illegal uh, to take out your phone while you're waiting in line. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I bet they would make it illegal to have a watch on it. it wouldn't make it too obvious what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> on, right? yeah. 
<laughs> of course, you go to USPS, I mean, you go to FedEx, you go to DHL, you know, they don't have these kind of um, totalitarian Kafka policies. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what you'll find there. You know, you also find them, if, if, of course, when you're uh, out there on the monopolized roads, you know, if it takes such a long time for you to get to point A to point B, that's a result of socialist policies. That's a result of socialist control over these, uh, that resources over, over these land, particular use areas. The, be the best example you had of this problem here in the United States that I can think of in any recent years, at least something that maybe somebody might even remember uh, watching this video, is the 1970s we had a nasty gas shortage. Um, <laughs> so the government, of course, puts a price control on gasoline and uh, things get worse. And the reason things get worse is because uh, uh, if, you can't, if you can't raise prices, then there's no incentive to get you know, uh, people who have uh, maybe a, a surplus of that resource to the place where they need it. So, you know, if, if a country is, uh, or uh, anyone at all, is uh, short of gasoline um, and the price goes up on gasoline, the people are like, you know what, maybe now it's worth sending some of this gasoline that I have, or I could typically sell for, you know, this amount for, per gallon over here where these people really need it because the price is so much higher. I'm thinking about myself. I'm just trying to, you know, make money. But that's the way I can make money, and that's getting them what they need. Yeah. Whereas if you don't have the price come, it's like, you know, why would I pay the shipping cost? You know, just, just sell right over here. I don't know. Some good, you know. Yeah, well, it's the incentive, right? Yeah. Um, and sometimes they call that price, price gouging. Yeah. Um, so okay, that price, <laughs> price gouging is basically by its definition if something abnormal happens, like a, like a natural disaster or maybe some kind of like a, like a military raid in some particular countries. Um, and that causes the particular resource to uh, deplete itself and the price goes up. The government's like, wait, nope, can't have that happen. And then it just, of course, never really settles itself because... Uh, you don't have people trying to get those those resources back to where they need them to increase the supply again. Because the bottom line is whenever you have prices go up like that, it isn't random. People don't just like, you know, I think I'm going to charge, you know, whatever this price for uh, for my good today. No, um, there's things that determine that. Um, and those things are always very, very important. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's basically just how price gouging yeah, works. Yeah, especially in uh, areas where scarcity is, uh, is a problem, um, mm -hmm. trying to provide these resources. At least it's going to be provided to those who, who want it more than, than that of others. Uh, especially in times of emergencies. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom line is there's enough stuff to go around. Yeah. So price gouging isn't going to solve that problem. So right. if you solve that problem, well, we know how there's a market solution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you find a lot of these problems, you know, that uh, government always tries to find solutions for, you know, by price controls, by dictating the prices of certain products of, of, of private property. And, you know, that in itself is actually. I guess objectively, it's a distraction. It's a distraction from the problems that Venezuela is facing right now, and what they're facing right now is runaway inflation. Uh, what was yeah. the percentage? Over fifty percent, I believe. Yeah, fifty-four percent. I think it was annual inflation, and that is ridiculous because, like, uh, in the, the United States, some of our worst inflation was in the nineteen seventies. In uh, August fifteenth, nineteen seventy-one, the United States officially drops the gold standard. Um, inflation goes up to about four percent annually, and that was considered a problem at the time. Of course, later in the decade, that would have been regarded as an accomplishment. We had nasty stagflation around 12, 13 percent, um, and that was again, a, a, in the eyes of the the public, was a terrible, terrible problem. Barely bad inflation. Um, Fifty-four percent is unheard of. I don't even know how they yeah. can deal with that. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and that's something that uh, eventually it's inevitable here that's going to occur in the United States, and that's something that most people need to be aware of and trying to, um, I guess. Uh, adapt to. Um, so in South America, it happens frequently, it happens all the time. Um, within those populations down there in those countries, they've had a lot of these problems where, you know, uh, the currency just goes to, you know, it's worth it next to nothing. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the cultures there, the people there are kind of used to that. Uh, whereas here in the United States, that can be a foreseeable problem because it's not something that, uh, I guess, there's no generational, I guess, connection to that. And it's a much bigger problem because a lot of these currencies are pegged to our currency. Yeah. <laughs> so when that happens... Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I remember the U.S. dollar's lost over 97% of the balance. You got only 3% left to go. Um, so with that, let's... Uh, I mean, that's, that's what's going on in Venezuela, down under, and these are things that will inevitably occur here. Um, already you're experiencing long wait lines and a lot of these government monopolized services, and that'll only continue to get worse and worse. Um, you know, what's the best thing you can do? You know, uh, well, read Economics One Lesson by uh, Henry Hazlitt and, uh, or Mises. We actually have a yeah. good quote to uh, close yeah, off this uh, so episode. end this off with a quote by uh, Ludwig von Mises, <coughs> who in human action, uh, as Magna Opus wrote, Economics does not say that isolated government interference with the prices of only one commodity or a few commodities is unfair, bad, or unfeasible. It says that such interference produces results contrary to its purpose, that it makes conditions worse, not better. So with that, fuck socialism, uh, <laughs> save capitalism, save the free market. And uh, this is Kyle Mullaney signing off. I'm Matt Badalioli. See you guys at the party. Take good care.